This has got to be my longest tutorial ever. And yes, I did it for you guys because you guys have been asking me how to texture within digital fashion. And so it is time on this channel that I show you guys how to do that. But by doing that, you guys are gonna find out how long this process is. So I'm gonna show you guys how I texture this piece here. I will show you guys how I organize it in Clove 3D before bringing it into Substance Painter for texturing and finally building it in the scene, connecting the textures as well within Cinema 4D. I didn't include building the actual garment. I feel like that could be reserved for another tutorial. I mean, if we include that part, this tutorial definitely would have been at least 10 parts. And for my patrons, you guys will be getting additional access to extra tutorials, including techniques on how I create my accessories within Cinema 4D and how I drape them on top of the digital fashion outfits. Also how I texture these accessories procedurally within Redshift and also unlocking this transformation animation, which creates the Cinderella wow moment. Not to mention you guys will also receive the scene files. So if you're interested in those extra files and tutorials, make sure to join my Patreon. All right, let's get into the tutorial. Part one is going to be all about organizing your UVs, getting them ready to be exported into Substance Painter. Now, it might not be the most exciting topic, but it must be done. So let's get into the tutorial. We are in Clo 3D and this is a piece that I have made before. And you can see in this piece, it is quite intricate. I did spend some time making it. Maybe if you guys want to see how I build my clothing, then we can save that for another tutorial. But this tutorial is all about texturing. So we have all of this and I've pretty much separated them so that you can see here in the layers here that we have, I've named them and actually naming them is important. Hat, I know we'll just name it hat. Um, hat, strings, I always say this, everything you name in the layers here are very important because when you bring it into Substance Painter and then when you export it back and you need to look for it in another 3D program, you want to make sure you know what you are selecting. So please make sure you um, label everything. Just do it now. It will save you pain later. Okay, just do it now. Okay, pause, take your time, reorganize this. I've got about, let's see, what's this? About 12 textures here. I recommend 10 textures is pretty good amount. I've got a lot here, but it is what it is. I tried to um, reduce them, but I think I really wanted to separate some, some parts. So of course, anything that is metal, you guys can see that there. Um, this other top section are the sleeves part here. So I've separated it all and I've labeled them all. Now, one thing I did add is a top stitch, which I've added here. You can, you can see it in, you see these pink lines, all of that is top stitch. So these top stitch should be exported from Clove 3D and we should be able to see them in Substance Painter. At least that is the plan. So we've got our top stitch. We have our, you know, these labeled, I wonder, let me just have a look. Did I organize my UVs? I did. I did. We organized my UVs, but what are these? What are these? Hmm. Still got a few more. Okay, so I recommend you guys organize your UVs. I wonder actually, maybe for you guys we should actually show you guys how to do it. I think that might be useful. So actually, I'm going to do it for you guys. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is actually just right click, reset UV to 2D arrangements. So this are basically the UVs and as I said, each color, you want to put the same colors into the same box. Anything red should go into, you know, zero to one. So what I'm going to do for now, move this up, move this up. And it's really important you keep everything the same size, the same scale. If you ever scale anything up in the box here, you must make sure that, uh, for example, what I mean, if you scale this one up, you have to scale these up proportionally as well. Otherwise, it's going to be weird. It's This one's going to be like higher resolution. There's going to be low resolution. So if you ever want to scale things up, let me control Z, there we go. You just like grab all of these. 
this section, the black section, including this and this. And then you hold shift and you would scale it up proportionally. Actually, I don't think you need to hold shift. Let me just double check. Yeah, you don't need to hold shift. Anyways, let me put these in the right box. And I'm actually my, I might switch to my tablet pen here because it's sometimes easier for me to move them. And I always say that UV or arranging UVs is not fun, but it must be done because once you organize it, then that is where all your textures are going to lay on top of. And out of all of the 3D programs, this one, Color 3D, is actually not too bad. If you ever tried moving UVs in Cinema 4D, you might cry. I heard they had a new update. I might have to try it. I don't think I've ever tried it ever since <laughs> I found how painful it was to utilize or to move UVs. I know I've labeled them on the right hand side here, but those are not the final colors. They are not the final colors because the final colors will be done in Substance Painter. Now in this case, it's okay to separate your, I suppose your layers into different UV squares or UDIMs as they call them. But if you guys are going to export for AR, for anything that is game ready, then you can't do it this way. You must put everything in one UV square. And I have recently made a video on that. If you guys are looking to bring it into a game ready or make it into a game ready asset, you don't wanna do it this way. You probably wanna check out the other video first. Organize it how you think it should be organized. I don't think there really is a rule. Just make sure they're not touching each other. Give them some space. Um, of course, anything that's horizontal we can put together, anything that is vertical we can put together as well. Now the reason why we don't, for example, we don't want to have this here and not have it in the same square because when you combine your textures and if you have the same colour or same texture overlapping, this section will overlap this section here and you're going to have overlap and then you're going to cry because you spent so long texturing and then you realize you messed up your UVs. So this is why we keep <laughs> the, the parts that need to be separated, keep it separate, okay? And that's also why I color coordinate them like this, so I know which one is what. In fact, we can probably not make everything gray. Let's have a bit of differentiation, you know? Make it blue, this mask we can, I don't know, make it a different color. There we go, red sections all together. Just double check, any more red sections apart from here. Now this, these are separate. These are the strings. So even the strings, well actually these pocket and mesh, I will change them to a different color. So we've got two reds. Let's make it like a yellow for now, done. Oh, I like this color scheme. <laughs> Reminds me of like um, Bruce Lee or Kill Bill. Ah, there we go. Do you see, guys see that? I nearly missed these. Okay, you guys come here. Come here. What are these part of? I hope it's not these. Yeah, because this is coming from the pendants. I recognize this. These are from the pendants here, so I actually don't want these to be red. I mean, sorry, these to be yellow. I want this and the strings, which I'll call it pendant. Pendant. Strings? No, just pendant. We'll keep it as pendant. Okay. Um, yeah, we double check this. I've frozen this at the moment. Yes. Okay, that's fine. So these are part of that. I don't want that in that yellow section there. However, we can move the string section up here instead. So what I mentioned before about having the same colored objects in one UV square, you can mix them. I don't mean just if they're yellow, you can't have the red section here. You just don't want to have, for example, this in this square and then have this pattern overlay on top of this one. Then that's you'll be in trouble. But we can have it like this. 
let's put everything in and if we want to scale things up we can do that later okay now we'll get this jade part we'll bring it up there i think that's the only jade part they're really close to each other so try not have them so close to each other just in case and what's next what is next on our list we can have the mask let's bring the mask over the mask can come in here as well and these little bits as well other top what is other top oh, what's that okay other top i called it But yeah, trust me on this, the more time you spend on just making sure that your UVs are correct, the less stressful it will be for the next section. Let me move this down a little bit. Okay. Alright, let's get all of these, what is it, other top, we'll get all of these kind of... How would you describe this colour? Turquoise? Turquoisey colours. Move them down here. Ooh, I don't know if we're going to have enough space gonna have enough space it doesn't look like it in fact let me just move this out of the way I'm gonna put them here where is this section from here and here okay and oh there's one more I missed one here a few moments later Now just because trousers and top are so similar in colour, it's like this grey, dark grey and black. So I am just going to change this to a totally different colour just so that we can really see the difference because I couldn't see where anything was earlier. As I said before, these are not the final colours so don't freak out. It's just so that I can see what is what. One hour later. Okay, so every single part has its own space. I'm gonna move this out here, move this in. Yeah, so we've got the top section all together, we've got this trouser section all together. This we've organized pretty well. Pretty, pretty well. So that is all, are all the UVs. I mean, I could scale this down potentially to try fit all of this in here, but Mm, I think I'll just leave it. We will just leave it like this. So what I'm gonna do first, we're gonna press save. I'm gonna save this. Second of all, we are going to export an OBJ so that we can bring it into Substance Painter and start doing the fun part, texturing. So I'm gonna go to File, Export. Actually, before we do that, because right now I think this is on thick. I've added some thickness to this piece. What my, I mean by that is, especially if you look at this belt, if I press Alt 2, this is thin, no thickness. Do you see how thin this, like everything looks? And if I press Alt 1, I've added the thickness in there. So I'm gonna export it with the thickness. Sometimes I export thin and then I add thickness in Cinema 4D to give it a bit of realism because no clothing is like is not as thin as a sheet of paper it's just not like that so I'm gonna go to file oh, file export obj go I don't want to select avatars I actually have an avatar in here I've just switched off the visibility of it um so I usually turn this off don't want the avatar export thick UV coordinates, I've got it to 2048 and scale, I've kept it as millimeters. So we kept it as millimeters. This is, I think this should be the only one that should be on. Press OK. Once you guys have exported the OBJ, then we are ready to bring it into Substance Painter. If you guys got any more questions, put it in the comments below. But I know you guys are excited for the texturing part, so I will see you guys in part two.